Say hi. Hello, everyone. Hi. So, ano ba? We should speak Tagalog or Filipino? Tagalog, Filipino na lang. Sige. So, currently, we are science teachers, middle, middle school science teachers here at Casigran Middle School. I'm teaching 7th and 8th grade. You're teaching? 8th grade. 8th grade. It's my second year here, but first year here in Casigran Middle School. And it's her first, first year. year. She has more, she has four more years to go. And I guess the purpose of this vlog is for us to just maybe share our experiences, maybe like give some advice to those teachers back in the Philippines who wanted to try also uh, continue their journey as a teacher here in the United States. So if I may start, so this is my second year teaching here in the USA, specifically Arizona. How's the experience like? Uh, it's it's kind of roller coaster, diba? It it's a roller coaster experience, especially well. I've worked in Dubai before for like four years, so it's not new to me. Na to me, a country where it's very diverse, a lot of personalities and backgrounds, but at the same time, may culture shock pa rin siya because they're very diverse, especially your students and the colleagues that you'll be working with. You just have to make sure that you have that strong will and motivation to do whatever it takes for you to be able to not just be part of the school, but be involved and be an asset of the school. What about you? Well, before coming here, I actually wanted, I really wanted to teach here because um, I wanted to try something new. I was bored, to be honest, I was bored with our educational system. I wanted to challenge and I never <laughs> thought what kind of challenge that I was getting in here, but it took two years for me to prepare myself. And I think that's the number one advice that I can mm -hmm. give to people who are, or teachers that are planning to teach here, is to prepare themselves a lot. For me, those two years that I prepared myself helped tremendously into overcoming um, homesickness mm -hmm. and also the struggles in here. That you, should, you, know, you should know what you're expecting. Expect the worst. Mm -hmm. to be honest definitely but today's the last day and i can say that i am so sad oh. <laughs> very sad because i don't have my eighth graders anymore uh -huh. and yesterday was their promotion uh -huh. and i felt the emotions that running through yeah running through i wanted to cry but i said i can't cry because the mascara is not waterproof but i was so sad and happy at the same time because you saw their maturity that mm -hmm. you're part of that progress na apakahirap ng pinagdaanan mo mm -hmm. sa kanila pero time by time may natututunan mm -hmm. ka sa kanila ang dami kong natutunan sa kanila and hopefully they they learned a lot from me actually that's a bad thing about not actually bad thing but that's a sad part of being an 8th grade teacher because you won't get to see them next school year they, and then you have to meet new set of students who you, whom you don't know because you never had the chance to, to meet them in classroom. Yeah, that's the sad part. Well, I'm teaching 7th and 8th grade here, so I still have my 7th grade going 8th grade. So there's still, you know, that excitement to see them if they would change from 7th grade to 8th grade. But if you have like solely 8th grade, it's, it's actually sad. It's sad. It will be sad. But I'm happy that you enjoyed your first year because it's my second year. I'm actually enjoying it. But I'm enjoying it. But as you all know, um, you're looking for something else. Exactly. I mean, as you all know, I'm quitting my. I wouldn't say quitting. This is my last you're day. Moving forward. Yes. This pretty is my last. Pretty quickly. Yeah. Five years. Pretty abruptly though. But this is my last day as a U.S. as a Filipino teacher here in the United States. Why I'm making that decision or why I made that decision, I'll have a separate vlog regarding that. But for today, we're just going to talk about our experiences. Now, it's my second year and I'm actually loving it. I think I was able to adjust pretty easily, especially because I had experience working outside of the country. And my, my teaching style is always building rapport and relationship with students. And I think it's working with my personality because I'm very bubbly, energetic. They would always tell me that they need to get that energy out from me because I don't know, that's just my personality and my personality really fits the middle school setting. And second year, it's, it's really fun. It's really fun. It's roller coaster, but 
it's bittersweet, it's but a I, <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's really a lot of work. And as a teacher here, we have a different discipline in the Philippines. So yes. when you come here, you need to a little bit lower your standard because you yeah. cannot to readjust your whole self. Yep, you had to readjust. Sometimes you have you have to unlearn stuff that you have in the Philippines and that what we have here. You can it's okay to compare the system back in the Philippines and here, yeah, but, but do not always compare it. Yeah, but as soon as you open your mind in here, you will love it. I mean, exactly. To be honest, I really love it. I mean, the students, you are their constant in here. You are their probably the only person that is um, a permanent in their lives mm -hmm. for these kids right here. And therefore, they're going to be putting a lot of things on you. They're going to put a lot of their emotions on mm -hmm. you. So that's the thing that you should prepare the most. Well, it's actually good at enjoying it. Yeah, I actually enjoyed it too. I'm, I'm pretty close with a lot of my students. And yeah, if you put your heart out, I mean, don't give... 100 yeah, percent effort too much, not though. too much especially here i'm not this. saying <laughs> but uh don't be too hard on yourself you can make a lot of efforts but if you feel like your efforts are not working maybe you need to step back a little bit so that you won't get frustrated because it's okay to cry too. it's okay to cry especially if it's your I first year she I'm had moments she had moments of crying but if you can't if you're not gonna cry it's i mean how did you cope up with that I mean, I, I was frustrated for the first three months, and then I had to let it out. I had to talk to the admin about it and then work it out with them. The best thing is that the admin, the support that oh. they give us is amazing. So that was that is why also that I was able to cope up with my classroom management here. And then I watch a lot of vlogs too or I read a lot of articles mm -hmm. on regards to classroom management here in the U.S. because mm -hmm. it's very different. So read a lot to um, ask the people in here, your next door neighbor who are the locals in here, they're going to help you a lot. I guess the keyword is you have to be open-minded and you have to be flexible. In all honesty, this is one of the best admins I've worked with. Shout out to Ms. Samantha Cernowski, Mr. Bell, Mr. Flora, our content coach, Ms. Christine Norman. They are amazing. You're not gonna feel so pre so much pressure because probably they know that we already have our own battles inside a classroom and they're here to support us. And they really gave us all the kind of support that we need so that we won't feel defeated because there are times like we would feel defeated. And I'm happy that that we have this kind of, of support here. And like what she said, it's her first year here and she's enjoyed it compared to other teachers who would be crying every day. And I guess it's also good that you have some Filipino teachers or like colleagues here, or like friends, you could say that you could always vent out. Again, my advice is it's okay to vent out. It's okay to tell people that you're having a hard time, right? Because admitting uh, admitting and owning up to your uh, to your struggles and, and issues in school will not make you less of a teacher. It's going to make you Everyone stronger. Everyone is going through the same thing. Yep. So even if you have master and PhD back uh, in the Philippines, do not think of that. Because if you think of that, you're actually putting a lot of pressure on yourself. So don't ever think of that. Vent out if you have any problems. Vent it out. Let it all out or else you'll be stuck alone and you don't even know what to do after. So that's it. But what do you think is your advice to the teachers back in the Philippines who wanted to try this kind of journey too? Yeah, well, the first thing I said before is a lot of preparation. And then also, um, if you're sending lots of applications out there make sure you choose the right state mm -hmm. do just, a lot of research though. yeah do a lot of research don't just accept it just because you've been coming here although it's one thing but of course the, it's your first year that we're mm -hmm. talking about it's building yourself mm -hmm. so if you're going to struggle on your first year it's not going to help you for the rest of the year mm -hmm. but um all in all just make sure that you're very prepared to come in here and you know what you're getting into mm -hmm. and then what they pay you actually is worth it mm -hmm. for every 
comparing it back in the Philippines, I mean. And plus in here, we just teach, nothing else. You don't do a lot of essay forums and everything. No, there's nothing like that. We're just going to be teaching and you should just focus on that, that's it. And I think for me is uh, coming here, you also represent the country. Yeah, that's so true. just try to be as good as you can, not only the best, but try to be a good representation of J1 visa teachers and all Filipinos because right now a lot of countries are looking up to Filipinos like if they want to get teachers they would always outsource from the Philippines which is a good thing and I think all of us are representing our country very well and yeah just be confident just try to be as prepared as you can as she mentioned when you're coming here, it's not just, I want to work here. You have to really prepare yourself or else you're going to set yourself to failure, right? So you really need to make sure you have everything you need. You learn if you're not really that, I mean, you don't really have to be fluent in English uh, here. You'll learn it here. I'm not that fluent. You will learn it. I mean, the accent, it's going to be a culture shock for you. You're going to have a hard time understanding the students, but... but plus your cool. <laughs> exactly. Like I would, I would always tell her to just get yourself immersed with the yeah. culture and everything, so that you'll get used to that. So that your ears would also get used to that. And aside from that, watch English movies. Lots it's of gonna, it. <laughs> uh, maybe cut some of the Korean dramas. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, from time to time. But if you want to get used to the language, my want to watch like series, like U.S. series and stuff. But all in all. She's enjoying it. I'm actually enjoying it. It just so happened to have a different vision and objective when it comes to teaching. I want to focus more on content. That's why I'm moving to China to be a teacher still as a middle school science teacher. I'm excited for that. And all my friends here are also excited for that journey. You're going to do great. <laughs> yeah, I hope. Right. Yeah. I, push <laughs> <laughs> I hope I do. Well, I, I know I'm going to do my best to, to, to be a good representation again. Yeah of the Philippines in China. And for everyone who wanted to come here, again, do research, watch a lot of YouTube videos. There's a lot of YouTubers there like myself who are like giving you everything you need. You all need to just watch it and read and research, ask people and just be confident. You have to carry yourself well. You have to make sure that you are coming here prepared because once you're here, it's gonna be a battle. Right, that's all for today. And uh, if you have any questions, just uh, comment down. We'll try to uh, answer that for you. Try. <laughs> yeah, I, I will try. She might actually make another vlog or like a separate <laughs> vlog. She she doesn't do that. But yeah, I hope you learned a lot from this 13 minute vlog. And today's the last day of our school year, school year 2022 to 2023. Everyone's looking forward to the next school year. She's gonna stay here. I'm also looking forward to next school year, but in a different country. That's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell. Well, YouTube to YouTube. Have a nice day, bye. <laughs>